one Wednesday, something happened at school and then there was no, there was no class. So I won't tell her and I will spend the afternoon with my friends. At first he was like pulling my ear and then he was the slaps and then he was the punching. And then I, she got the wit out. It reinforced the idea that as soon as I can, I'm out of here. This is In Therapy with Alex Howard, a first of its kind series that places you directly in the therapy room. My name is Alex Howard, and it is my hope that by bringing you on the journey with us, you too can learn the tools to transform your life. This series, we're following Pierre, whose life is overshadowed by a sense of unworthiness and a fear of rejection. Pierre has come to In Therapy to overcome his childhood trauma and to realize his true self-worth. There's a, a longing that's not being met. Yeah, I've always uh, felt a hole in my soul. Yeah, it's like it's not your fault that it's there, but you're the only one that can heal it. Yeah. So as you give a invitation to that place inside of you, what happens? Join us each week as we follow every step of Pierre's journey, both in and outside of the therapy room. As well as the tools I give Pierre in the sessions, I'll also be sharing weekly top tips so you can begin to unlock your true potential. This is In Therapy. In last week's session, Pierre and I explored how two things can be true at the same time. Firstly, that we can know our parents loved and cared about us. But secondly, despite this, our core emotional needs may not have been met. And it is important to feel our true emotions around this. Pierre's homework was to think of examples when he would have felt anger, hate and rage if he'd been allowed to have his feelings. And it's here that we begin today's session. One of the things that you said that I thought was interesting in your um, reflections is that there was there was one experience where there was still just, just writing about it, there was activation and there was anger there. But also the, the, in a lot of it, you realize that underneath a lot of that anger is also the sadness. Say a bit about what you noticed that was that still feels activating. Like when you reflect on it and just being with it, you still feel that response in yourself. It's more about, you know, how can you be so unhinged with mm. your, you know, with your child? And this was the experience when your mum was physically abusive towards yeah. you. Yeah. Can you say a little bit, as much as you feel comfortable sharing yeah, in yeah, this yeah. context, you to kind of... Do you want me to tell the whole story or yeah. just... Yeah, because it's one thing for me to read it. It's another thing for us to, to talk about it together. Yeah. Um, one Wednesday, something happened at school and then there was no, there was no class. Um, and then, so I thought, oh, perfect. So I won't tell her and I will spend the afternoon with my friends doing my own thing, mm. <laughs> really. And then I told my brother and then as a prank, he said, he, he didn't tell her, but he's, he, he said, oh, um, Anyway, he, he attracted her attention to the fact that there was something I, I wasn't, I, I was hiding. Mm. And then, of course, uh, she took the bait and then she was like, what is it? What is it? So I said, well, no, no, it's nothing. Don't worry. And then she started hitting me. And then it, it escalated from, you know, uh, at first he was like pulling my ear and then he was the slaps and then he was the punching. And then I, she got the whip out. Um, and was that something she'd done before? No. And I, I remember thinking, what's going on? You know, who, who's, that, who's that, really? Were you, were you afraid? Yeah, of course. Um, and then when that didn't work, she threatened me not to send me uh, to Paris to see my auntie. That scared me. 
yeah. even more. Because that was your source of love. Yeah, because, you know, that was like the carrot that, this, you know. Uh, and then, but then, that's the thing, you know, when you sort of, uh, she was like, right, you're not going this summer. And then I, obviously now looking back, I think, well, if, if you, if, um, because I felt like I had already lost everything, then I thought, you know what, I will never tell you. So you might as well kill me now because uh, I will, you know, then it was a mad, it was just a, you know, a fight of who, you know, of endurance. Yeah, it was a defiance. It, yeah. Yeah. And it reinforced the idea that I have to go, really. I just have to go. As soon as I can, I'm out of here. And in your, in your reflecting this last week, you mentioned that it feels like there's less of the anger now. Does that feel like because there's been you you have been processing and and yeah. and moving through that? Mm. But it sounds like there's more of the sadness. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Well, it's the sadness of that happening. Really, that's horrible. Yeah. Now the the sadness of having never met my parents. So you know, it's, it's a bit like um, I had some housemates. So. I know their habits, but I don't know them. Yes. You know, I don't even know what, you know, what their favorite colors are. I don't even know what their, what kind of music they listen to. I don't know what their hobbies are. But there's the sadness of you looking back. So there's your sadness now as, as, as a man looking back on, it's sad I didn't know them and it's sad that we didn't have, on both sides, have that, 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 mm. that relationship. But there's also the sadness of the little boy of longing for something that he's not getting. And that's not just about his relationship with your parents. It's also his relationship with your grandmother and your auntie and the sense of that was the love that he wasn't getting. And then he's, he's, he's not getting it from mom and dad and, and so on. And that's, that's, a, that's a different sadness, I think. Because one's a kind of looking back, wishing for something, and the other mm. is a more immediate, like sadness in your body that there's yeah. that there's a there's a a longing that's not being met. Yeah, I've always uh, felt a hole in my soul. Right, always. And like, does it have a location in in, in your yeah, body? Yeah, in my chest. Yeah, all the yeah. So it's a feeling of feeling empty, or what else? Can you hollow, say? hollow. Yeah. Mm. And is that something that you're, it sounds like it's it's there all the time, but maybe you're not always aware. Like what's your level of awareness or your level of, of contact with this? I, I was hoping somebody else would take care of it. Yeah. And now I, f I know that no one else can. I mean, it's nobody's job, but my own, really. Yeah, it's like it's not your fault that it's there but you're the only one that can heal it. Yeah. Right? And that, that's, the, that's the tricky thing, that it, it's like it happened in a place of total dependency and vulnerability because you were a child. But the gift of growing up is that you have capacities and resources that you didn't have then. Mm. But I also think that a lot of what we learn as children is that how we feel, because it's biologically true, how we feel is dependent upon the actions of others. The challenge is then that what we learn is we have these holes in our in ourselves that then we think we need something on the outside to fix it. You know, be that if I'm successful enough or if I have the right relationship or if I have the right this or that, then I'm going to fix the, mm. the, this, this hole inside. Because as children, that's what we're that's that's what we're taught. And biologically, it's true. Like in our physical body, if we are hungry, it's like having a hole in your tummy and you eat something and it fills it. Mm. The challenge is that for our emotional body, it's it's different. That there isn't any outside thing that's gonna gonna fill fill those holes. Mm. What can fill it is our own loving attention and our own presence and it's i think a very good example of of the phrase that you can't heal what you don't feel and having tactical things to do and positive mindset and all that stuff is helpful in life 
but it doesn't really meet that place that is a is a felt place mm. as we're talking now do you feel some of that hole that we've been talking about no should i <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that's, that's why i'm asking <laughs> no uh no no actually i think the thing what i'm what i'm feeling is you know the gratitude to be able to work on it and to mm. may, maybe you know put it behind me mm. yeah i don't know I, I i i i'm aware that i probably sound like i'm picking on semantics and that isn't my intention but but i think it's less about putting it behind you because that's almost like i want to get i want to mm. get rid of yeah, it like yeah, i, yeah, I yeah. want to remove it and it's more about actually inhabiting the whole because the whole well that one has become over analytic about it the whole is a deficiency of love right mm. there's a place in your whole which was deserving needing and longing of love that was not met and it was met by your auntie and your and your grandmother for the first six years of your life and it may not be met perfectly but like it was met and then it wasn't met mm. so there's actually a place in in your soul which is right now deficient because it's it's empty like it, mm. it needed that love that, that wasn't there and that deficiency i think is being a big part of what you, what you've battled with in, in in life and a big part of mm. why you're here in, in a sense and so for me it's not about putting that in the past or putting it behind you it's actually let's explore the whole let's really meet that place in you which hasn't been met in the way that it's needed mm. no actually that makes a lot of sense because uh, another thing i remember i realized uh, a few months ago now is because i trained myself to you know never be there <laughs> or always you know um project myself in the future yeah so um yeah it became second nature and um the problem is you know i'm never um there's an expression when they say you know um you need to be happy on your way to happiness mm. uh but I, i didn't apply that yet so you know, <laughs> so the thing is you know i re i've realized that actually i already have my dream life which is not you know of course it's not the way i expect it to be but in a sense you know um this is already happening yeah i hear that um but I, i'm so focused on well well i haven't got the house i haven't got this i haven't got that i don't got the employees you know well you want employees why not <laughs> <laughs> i'm just joking <laughs> looking at these two <laughs> When we weren't given the love and holding we needed as children, what can happen in adulthood is that we experience a sense of insatiable deficiency. This can take many forms. For Pierre, it is this feeling of a hole in his soul. To attempt to solve this deficiency, people often look to outside sources such as relationships, external achievements, drugs or alcohol. However, these usually only serve to distract away from how we feel. The only true way to fill this void is from within. So a little bit like we did last time, I'd like to do is a bit more kind of experiential work with it. And really what, what we're doing is just giving these, the feelings an invitation to be, to, to be felt, not to be fixed or changed or to have solutions to but the one of the things that you were fundamentally not given as a little boy was permission just to be where you were and so that's really what what those those places need mm. so you can as we did last time you just have your eyes open or closed it's often easier for periods of time to have your eyes closed because there's kind of less distraction mm. but if you want to have your eyes open or at any point you want to open your eyes it's not like a rule of thumb that says that you have to <laughs> have your eyes closed but if you're comfortable to just close your eyes and just 
Notice initially just how your body feels on the chair. Just feeling your feet on the floor, feeling the contact points between your body and the chair, feeling your hands on your lap. And just maybe noticing your breath and just taking your breath maybe a little bit deeper. And then just notice that feeling that we talked about, which may or may not be there at the moment. We were talking about that feeling of that hole in your soul that you were demonstrating as being around your chest and your torso and being quite a palpable sense. And just see if that's something that comes into your awareness as we're exploring together. It it seems very faint. Very faint. Okay, Mm. good. What is the felt sense of it? So the bit that you can notice that's faint, what does it feel like? Um, It sounds like it's, uh, it feels like it's an oxygen bottle that's been emptied. Oh, that is empty, completely empty. So there's like a kind of void or like a nothingness mm, yeah like exactly yeah, yeah. Void, yeah so just see if it feels okay to give some space and some permission to the emptiness just seeing what happens if you perhaps let yourself inhabit the bottle a little bit as much as feels comfortable for you but just giving it your your attention being really interested and that feeling of emptiness. And really trusting your unconscious and trusting your emotional body to know what it needs right now. And as we've been saying, your role is to be with it. Your role is not to do it. Um. It feels like it's starting to fill fill up. And what does it fill up with? Uh, it feels warm. Hmm. Can you say more about that feeling of warmth? It feels like um, yeah, it's the level is rising from the bottom up, and it's rising with a sense of warmth. Hmm some white light yeah okay good so allowing that white light allowing that sense of warmth to fill that place and how does it feel as you allow that to happen it makes me feel like um i am loved by the way Yeah, that you are loved. So my real invitation is just to feel it. Mm. Because it's true that for many years, it felt like there was a hole in your soul. Because for that little boy, he needed someone else to fill that hole. But you here as a man can fill that hole yourself with your own loving kindness and attention. So just really noticing how that impacts you and how it impacts that place where there was that hole in your soul. It feels like the the vessel is um, not disappearing, but it just is integrated into myself. Yes. What does it feel like when it's integrated? It's a bit like I, I had lost something, or I had lost an ability to, you know, move or feel or something, and it's just came back online, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And just really noticing how this feels throughout your body, that sense of coming back online. It's almost like that quality of love is not a quality that you have to do something to receive. It's the fabric of who you are. 
is the fabric of your soul. And in that recognition, there's also something that's deeply empowering because you no longer have a dependency upon others or events or circumstances to know who you are and to feel connected to that fabric of who you are. How is it to, to recognize that? I feel like I'm just like everyone else. Yeah. You know, sometimes with these places inside of ourselves, and it may or may not be these, these words fit for you, but what comes to my mind is it's like, it's the most ordinary thing in the world. And it's also the most extraordinary thing in the world. I don't know if that, if that feels true or not. Mm. It's like ordinary because it's like, yeah, well, of course, love is the fabric. But it's also extraordinary when we haven't been connected to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I'm curious if you imagine a little in your mind, thinking about the next few days, and the next week or two, of meeting the events of your life from this place. So when you're coming from a place of love, not doing to get love or needing of love or feeling deficient of love, but coming from a place of love being your DNA in a sense, being at the core of who you are, noticing how that changes how you experience your life. And on one level, it may be on a surface level, it appears like it's just your life is the, is the same. But on a deeper level, the place from which you meet it is different. And I'm curious as to what you notice when you think about it, of those differences. And in my mind, I'm imagining the house we lived in when, you know, my mother was beating me up. Yes. Well, not, well, they hung me up at once, but. Yes. Um, yeah, I still feel sadness. Really. Yeah. I think sadness is very appropriate. It was very sad. Mm. How do you feel towards the sadness? I feel like I can observe it, but it just, it feels like, well, you know, yes, it happened, but it's in the past now, you know, mm. so, uh, um, and I can still feel the vessel filling up. Okay, good. Because the objective of what we're doing is not that things that were sad stop feeling necessarily sad or that things that were scary suddenly feel kind of empty. It's that you're connected to your emotional truth and that the places that were left deficient no longer have to be. And if you imagine your life now, meeting it from this place, from this place of being connected to love as the core of who you are. And you imagine your life now in the coming days and weeks. How does that look different? Um, if you sort of calm and I mean, what I mean by calm is balanced, uh, and harmonious. Yeah. So like there's less effort required, right? Yeah. Because you're not having to effort to fill the hole. Yeah. 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 And less um, fear. Yes. And if you imagine going a few months and then a few years in the future, it's like you don't know, of course, the circumstances of, of, of life. But what we can know is the place from which we intend to meet them. And I'd like you to imagine meeting life from a place of this connection to love not being something that's outside of you or love not being something that's deficient inside of you, but being love being the fabric of who you are and being able to meet your own 
places of emptiness with your own love and filling them up, how does that change how your future looks? It feels easier. Yeah. Good. So just bringing your attention back to the felt sense of your body right now. And that vessel can keep filling up. And that vessel might keep filling up for the next few hours or days or so on. And whatever it needs, it's you giving it permission to do that. And maybe what it needs from you is to bring your attention back to this place when you need to. And really committing to yourself that that's something that you can and you will do as needed. And then just becoming a bit more aware of the sound of my voice and the sound of noises outside. And just feeling the sensation of your fingers, maybe and have a little bit of a stretch, open your eyes and just sort of bring yourself a bit more back into this space. How are you doing? I'm good. Being filled up. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. What our emotions need more than anything is permission to be felt. Not to be fixed or changed, but to be given the space to just be there. In doing so, we ultimately are learning to meet our own core emotional needs of boundaries, safety, and love. And ironically, this doing nothing takes a great deal of attention, care, and presence and is in of itself an important practice. One of the metaphors I sometimes use, it's a little bit like holding a tennis racket or a golf club and you can hold it too tight. And if you hold it yeah. too tight, it's not good, but you can also hold it too loosely and it's getting just that right amount of grip with it. Yeah. And the same is true here that you, you know, your life still needs to move, but it's just holding yourself with the right, with the right, kind of hold in a sense mm. that makes me think of you know trust in the fact that it's going to happen i just have to i don't i don't need to deserve it it just um i just have yeah i just have to let it happen yeah yeah you know it's such a it's such a kind of curious thing in a sense that how how many of us come out of childhood with this belief that we're not deserving or others are more deserving mm. or that we can't have what we what we want and, and 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 what we need and yet when you really think about it why is any one person more deserving than another we're all deserving mm. i remember having a conversation with my eldest daughter he was um I was, this was a few years ago, I, was, I had to give her quite a strong boundary about something. She was kind of acting up as, you know, kind of kids doing it, a kind of clear boundary. And she went to bed that night and she was, she was really kind of like irritable and shut down. And, and I was kind of like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? And in the end, she, she opened up and, and the conclusion she'd come to was because I'd given her a boundary and not one of our other daughters, that it meant that I loved them more, more than I loved her mm -hmm. because I, she felt like I'd taken their side over taking her side. And we kind of, really the crux of it was that her, and this was, she would have been I don't know, eight or something at the time, that in her model of the world at that time, if there's love given here, that there can't be love given there. It's almost like love is like a slice of cake. Yeah. And if one person gets a big slice, that means there's less for, for, for the other person. And the realization in, in her and me that, the recognition, not so much realization of me, but the re realization in me of what was happening in her, that she was feeling that that she was unworthy or that the love was not available for her. And, you know, and so this, we all have these experiences and, and sometimes, not that I'm trying to claim to be the most skillful parent in the world, but relatively skillful parenting, I think at least in that moment, but even with that, it's like we kind of come away so often from these experiences. And then you take, you know, really dysfunctional, traumatic childhood situations. And we come away with all these beliefs about ourselves that this person's loved more than me or this person's more valuable or because I'm not getting the love that I need, I must not deserve that love. Mm. 
And then that just shapes our lives. And in a sense, this, that's why this realization is so important that our lovability is not about anything that we do or we achieve or it's, it's inherent of who we are. It is the fabric of, of who we are. So homework this week is, is, is relatively simple. Homework this week is to make time for these feelings. And, it, and when I say these feelings, it might be that the emptiness is still there in ways. It may be that it's not and it's just the filling up that's happening. It may be that you reflect more on some of these memories and there's some anger that comes up or there's some longing. But just really trying to support this move away from thinking and doing towards feeling and experiencing. That can be as simple as uh, meditation, just time to actively focus mm. in, but it can also just be giving it, which I think will, will happen anyway, just giving it time to reflect and just thinking about it. So, I think, good, you're welcome. When we disconnect from ourselves, we don't just disconnect from our pain. We also disconnect from the core of who we are, which is love. And ultimately, this love, which is within our heart and soul, is the ultimate source of our own healing. As adults, we have within us what we need to be able to heal. But to access this, we have to slow things down, make space, and learn how to connect to the love which is the very fabric of who we are. Continue to follow Pierre's journey over the coming weeks as we release weekly episodes of his sessions with me. You can watch here on YouTube or listen to the episodes as a podcast. To help support you in coming on the journey with us, I've created some materials to accompany the series. Each week, there is a bonus video with me and a worksheet to bring the session to life for you. In this week's reflections, I'll be sharing a simple practice to help you connect more deeply to your true nature. You can find these resources for free at intherapy.alexhoward.com. Here's what's coming up next week. The other thing I'm really, you know, I feel it that the imposter syndrome. How does Pierre fully be Pierre in those moments where he's got an idea of who he thinks he should be or what he thinks other people are thinking, what you said about the imposter syndrome, is the more you can be you, I think is your, is your secret source.